Hey y'all, it's Katie with Right Joy Shearing, and by your click, I can tell you're here for blood. Today's episode is going to be all about nicks, what happens when they occur on sheep, and what happens when they occur on a shearer. Shearing is always a dangerous adventure, and even though I may be a trained professional, this may be that sheep's first time. There are a lot of variables, and really it goes past the sheep. We're also working with dangerous machinery that can malfunction. I've traded in my black pants for green shorts, and I'm gonna show you all the scars and tell you all the horror stories of some of my most outrageous injuries. Stay tuned. So I've got a perfect learning opportunity because today I've actually nicked this sheep. Now, if you look at the side of this sheep, you can see that she's a little patchy. She's got little bits of lanolin. Mm -hmm. That is stored up and that makes her what we call super sticky because it's very hard for the comb to get between the skin and this and that was the same thing on her belly and as you can see there's this vein here called the milk vein it runs down and it supplies blood to the udders and I nicked right above that vein it was the tiniest spot but with this being sticky and this being so close to the skin I nicked it but we saved the vein if I would have cut that vein then we would have had blood everywhere. But this is the best case scenario if something bad has to happen. Very impressive to have just gotten the skin. It shows you the power of sheep skin and uh, that it's a lot different because if this was a human skin cut, it would be bleeding a lot more. But because I missed the vein, we're okay. Now, a lot of people would think that we should treat that with something, put some spray in it. But really the lanolin that she produces is the best kind of antiseptic for these very um, not deep skin wounds. If it was a big gash or bigger than my thumb, I would be concerned that I need to take more care. But right now, she's going to heal fine in the pasture as long as we keep the flies off of it. It's not just the sheep we're concerned about when we talk about nicks. Sometimes the shearer gets it too, and today that was my fate. I was shearing a baby doll and jammed that sucker right into my arm. So you can see here, it's not very deep. Um, I haven't washed it yet. Uh, it didn't bleed too, too much at all. But uh, if you have cut like this and lanolin from a sheep gets in there, that lanolin um, tends to make us burn a lot. It's almost like an alcohol burn when that lanolin gets into one of these. So typically I would just leave this alone, but I'm gonna hide and clean this up. Get a better look of it now that it's healed. Not too bad. Definitely gonna mess my tattoo up. I'm not saying this is how you should treat it. Just saying this is how I'm going to treat it. And I probably wouldn't recommend using your sweaty shirt to dry it off either. But I just have a few more sheep, so I'm just trying to get through this job. Oh, I guess I should have washed it with that stuff that you gave me. Oh, well, it's already bound up now. <laughs> Alright, let's get back to work. So it's been about 11 hours, actually almost exactly since I put this wrap on. I'm going to take it off for the first time and see what it looks like. Oh man, that's gross. Oh yeah, it looks good. Not so bad. Oh, this doesn't even look like it's gonna affect the tattoo that much. It's the morning after I took that nasty bandage off. So let's check out the healing process and see where it's at. It's not looking so bad, it's not feeling so bad. You can see this is healing up real nicely. I just am missing one piece of skin there. Um, I guess I didn't need that shading, but it looks like all these lines lined up pretty well. I I think that I don't need to cover it today. As long as it doesn't bust back open, I shouldn't have any pain. Um, the only thing is, is as sheep lay against it, I might feel a little bit of pain, but I can deal with that as we figure it out. Like I said, what's good for the sheep is good for the shearer, and if I'm a big proponent of mixed heel on their own, then I should practice what I preach. As you can see, my injury has healed perfectly. 
but really this isn't even close to the worst injury that I've had. It's only the first one that I've ever documented from the time that I've nicked myself to the time that I fully healed. Now you have to remember, I didn't have a mentor growing up. I literally was learning by doing and teaching myself day by day, step by step. So I learned a lot of lessons, unfortunately, the hard way. And that's actually why I chose to tattoo my arms. I was tired of all the scratches and red marks on my arms showing all the time and I figured that if they were black you wouldn't be able to see the raised red. And guess what? I was right! <laughs> Darian actually counted it up not too long ago and came up with the number 100 for the amount of scars I had. And honestly there's a lot that are covered up by tattoos that you can't even see anymore. Now a step up from that for me would be the time that I chose to wear the wrong clothing and I nicked myself. It was a one cheap job. I didn't take the time to grab my long pants, so I sheared in just my shorts. I was using an electric corded clipper. It got caught underneath a sheep, so I gave it a good yank, and when I did, the shears actually went into my leg. There was nobody there to tell me to stop, so I kept going. I just put a bandage over there, wrapped it up, and went on about my day. Uh, later that night, I had a veterinary friend sew me up on the couch. 22 stitches with nothing but a little bit of ice. I think that should have been a wake-up call at how dangerous this equipment is. But again, I've been holding these shears in my hand since before I even know how to use them, right? But I would have to say by far the worst accident that I ever had was when my machine totally locked up on me and left me a permanent dimple and some scars on my arm. I was shearing some lambs and changing out my comb and cutter. And while I was on my hands and knees, I started up the machine. I didn't get my tension right on the top and it threw the cutter out wedged the chicken feet inside of the comb, and that thing lit up like a human-sized blunder. It spun out of my hand and hit me in my shoulder twice, in my face once, and uh, bounced down my arm. We couldn't get the machine to turn off because the rope had wrapped around the shaft. So it was just bam, 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 leaving shrapnel in the plywood. Thankfully, somebody pushed Darian out of the way because she was shearing next to me and she would have probably got caught in it second. But I didn't know what to do, so I just went to the water hose and I cleaned it off and uh, screamed and cussed and cried. I had just had a handpiece blow up in my hand, but I knew that if I didn't pick those shears up again, I would be scared of them and that I couldn't afford to be scared of those shears. So I changed out the handpiece because I always keep a spare one. And uh, I got back on the horse and I sheared some more sheep. And as you can imagine, having a vet sew you up once, who cares if they sew you up twice? So I went to my friend and I was like, hey, what do you think? Does it need stitches? And he's like, you will heal without it. He told me I needed to make sure it stayed clean. This was a pretty deep one. So I went home and I took antiseptic and I scrubbed in that wound until I was sure that I had gotten everything out. I was cleaning my face and I noticed that it bubbled and I was like, damn, that's a hole in my cheek. And it hadn't gone all the way through. I knew that much. Well, I just thought it was a slice. I kept it clean. Like Doc said, it healed, scabbed over, scab peeled off, left a pretty little scar, a nice little dimple, right? And about 10 days after the accident, I saw a little pus pocket. I took a needle and I popped the first pus pocket. You know, I just figured if I cleaned it, it would heal and go away. But the next day, I had another pus pocket. I grabbed a new needle. And instead of going up and down, I went east-west, and it scraped against metal. And I was like, no! <laughs> There's something in my cheek, and it's been there for 10 days. <laughs> so now I got to get it out, right? I had already made a nice little hole with my needle, so I took a pair of scissors and worked my way up the scar tissue. And I tried to get it with a needle, and I couldn't get it. And I took my fingers like this, pushed it together like a pop in a pimple, put my tongue on the inside, and pushed about 50% of it out. 
That is actually a tooth from a comb of a shearing blade. When it locked up and hit me in the face, it broke off. I feel very lucky that I came out pretty unscathed. But this is serious and it is dangerous. And I didn't always appreciate it for the dangerous side of it. Um, but I do now. And I'm very lucky that that didn't go into my eye. It didn't hit me in my jugular. It didn't cut off the tip of my nose, my ear, my Achilles. I mean, people have had them lodge into their femoral artery. In fact, the connection point that I was using has been made illegal in other countries because of it injuring shearers. They have a better design that I just wasn't aware of because I didn't have that mentorship. I just hope that by sharing my experience, other people who are looking for mentorship on how to shear either their own sheep or loads and loads of sheep or llamas and alpacas can take this information and just use it to give themselves better safety practices than I was aware of. Maybe people who didn't understand that the people who are able to do it well have put a lot of time and training into it. It's not easy to make something look easy. I know it was a bit graphic, but uh, there's no better way to show it than just to show it. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.